Hello YouTube. Uh, today I'll tell you about a very unusual discovery uh, that took place uh, some decades ago and it was a Soviet discovery so to say of the Atlantis except we do not know that much about the concrete details and what is known in the West is very little but I did collect Russian language materials and um, information from the available sources any way I could. Uh, the problem is that some of the people involved in the research are well advanced in their age. Some of them have passed on and uh, basically th th there are not many people interested in this case but we should be. So let me tell you what's known in the West first of, uh, of all. The Ampere or Ampere Seamount has in the past been cited as a possible location for the lost city of Atlantis. Following the discovery in 1981 of what appears uh, to be a Soviet undersea explorers and they thought that they saw the ruins of walls and steps embedded in the sea mount. Now this Ampere sea mount according to some information is 600 kilometers west of Gibraltar is one of nine inactive volcanoes along a bent chain, the so-called horseshoe seamounts. Now, seamounts are mountains that rise from the ocean floor but do not reach the water's surface. All of them ascend from the abysmal plain of 4,000 to 4,800 meter depth to a few hundred meters below the sea surface, except two which nearly reach the surface, the Ampere Massif on the southern flank of the group and the summit of the Gorinj Bank in the north. The horseshoe, serrated like a crown, opens towards Gibraltar and stands in the way of its outflow. These seamounts are part of the Azores Gibraltar structure which marks the boundary between two major tectonic plates, the Eurasian and the African plate. The submarine volcanism which formed the Horseshoe Seamounts belongs to the seafloor spread area of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. The maximum activity was between 17 and 10 million years ago and terminated after that. The volcanoes consist of basalts uh, and tufts. Uh, most of their flanks and the abysmal plain around are covered by sediment of microorganic origin. And uh, now one recollection from a Soviet scientist initially involved in this. And the, he says the report about the discovery of Atlantis on the mountain Ampere or Ampere does not did not belong to the Soviet researchers. It was actually disseminated by major Western information media information centers after a press conference in Lisbon, which took place aboard the Soviet scientific research vessel Vitez, uh, which arrived in the capital of Portugal after its voyage in the Atlantic. Soviet scientists received received photographs recently or made photographs recently which confirm uh, the existence between Portugal and the Isle of Mandeira of the legendary uh, vanished continent of Atlantis and um, according to one uh, Western agency and they said that this was stated by a well-known Soviet oceanologist or uh, researcher of ocean of oceans, Dr. Andrei Aksionov. Um, <clears throat> he reported that eight photographs, which soon will be given to the media, depict underwater mountain with the ruins of walls and a gigantic stairwell. But this is what doctor of the geographical scientist Andrei Aksionov said himself. Well, mysterious Atlantis, if we are to believe to Plato, was located to the west of Portugal. And um, additionally, the uh, demise of Atlantis, it was a disaster, which is similar to the well-known earthquake of 1755, when um, the whole of 
Lisbon basically was turned into ruins. So <clears throat> I had to talk about the contents of the dialogues of Plato, which describe the Atlantis, uh, about the discussions of those who believe in the existence of Atlantis, and, uh, and their adversaries, and people who don't agree with them. He also mentioned the eight photographs of the apex of the mountain Ampere, which were made from a vessel um, called uh, Moskovsky Universitet, or Moscow University, uh, by one Soviet scientist from the Institute of Oceanology of the Academy of Sciences USSR before, well before the current expedition aboard Vikas and he continues I limited uh, by just stating that on two of them you can clearly see remnants of the artificial structures in his opinion structures that were demolished or destroyed of course, there was no basis for sensations. No one told journalists that the photographs of the apex of the underwater mountain Ampere prove that Atlantis had existed. And he continues, uh, among the chaos of the underwater world, it seemed to us that we saw geom geometrically correct forms, craters of volcanoes, which look like giant circles, um, monolithic basalt walls, which um, reminded us of very crafty, of craftsmanship, of uh, wall building. We were sure at the time that a nature could not create walls with straight uh, angles and a lot of other things remained mysterious. So again, this is what he said, that at the time they were sure that nature could not create such artificial, such, such objects. And then something else after he said that. But with the help of the underwater apparatus Argus and other contemporary means, we carefully looked at the mountain, the divers descended to the depth of 200 meters. We made 9,000 photographs and we took samples of the um, ores found uh, 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 in the area, geological samples. In the laboratory now we're trying to determine the age but we know for sure there is no basis to state that the rocks we collected were done by men or human beings and more of moreover there is no basis to state that they're remnants of some well advanced civilizations a long long time ago these mountains were on the surface of the earth maybe there was life here before but we didn't find its confirmation but with the 100 percent i can uh, scientists can say the um, uh, those who had studied the so-called walls of the Atlantis, they can say that the walls are not result of the labor of the Atlantis, people who live in Atlantis, but are what uh, is called um, veins, veins of lava, which uh, uh, became ossified basically, or um, uh, cooled down in the fixtures among the surrounding nature. And uh, this lava flow, which looks step-like, like like, like like stairwell, that make the illusion of the stairwell. Well, that's what they said. Let's look more. <coughs> the uh, underwater Mount Ampere, which um, the apex is 50, 60 meters below the surface, is located 400 kilometers to the southwest from the shores of Portugal and is part of the Horseshoe Archipelago. And uh, the, uh, um, according to Aksionov, what we already know, geological data state that the mountain is a volcano and that after it was formed there was one big volcano explosion after, after which the uh, volcanic island uh, sunk under the sea level. So this gives us 
foundation to think that the island was basically inhabited sometime before but the new uh, volcano activity led to its sinking that's what Aksyonov said to the uh, Izvestia correspondent uh, trying to understand what happened reconcile all the facts and of course we need to organize an expedition which will study the uh, apex of the uh, underwater uh, mountains which form the uh, horseshoe archipelago uh, which should not be too difficult to do uh, maybe the scientists will find really will find proof of the existence of ancient civilization and then we will have facts not problematic <coughs> writings of Plato well the expedition was organized and of course the Soviets say the uh, target or the aim of the expedition was not the search for the Atlantis but very detailed study of the bottom of the Atlantic including mountain Amper with its structures which look like remnants of the ancient settlements so it was the underwater apparatus called Argus which uh, conducted 12 dive operations to the uh, to the apex of the mysterious mountain where the researchers thought that you know um, they, they entered the sunken city all right so what um, what, what what was going on now we're going to talk about somebody whose last name is Gorodnitsky and I'll tell him more about it here's what he says we saw their re uh, ruins or remnants um, of homes um, rooms arcs and stairwells what is it are they uh, footprints of the Atlantis is it something that was created by nature in a very unusual way uh, according to the doctor Garadnitsky who was a doctor of geological mineralogical sciences by the way the analysis of the basalt that uh, you know, it comprises this underwater structure showed that the basalt this basalt was formed in the air not in the water so we cannot uh, exclude that contemporary underwater mountains in the past in the ancient past were islands and we can say we can guess that they sank under the ocean because of the tectonic disasters if we think in our minds if we raise up this whole chain of the mountains yeah the outlines are just like the Atlantis which is uh, depicted on ancient maps maybe it's not really like that but we really want to believe in Atlantis that's what he said so who is he Alexander Maisevich Garadnitsky uh, he, he is a, a well-known person he is he was in, in in 2018 he was 85 years old so he is a very well advanced in his age and um, he's a well-known Soviet and a Russian Jewish bard and poet he professionally he's a geologist and oceanographer he's a member of the Russian Academy of Natural Sciences now bard so at least you know is a term that we use in Russian um, especially in the Soviet Union and uh, it was used in the early 1960s it continues to be used what it means is like a singer songwriter who wrote the songs outside of the Soviet establishment it's similar to somewhat to folk singers of the American folk music revival except American uh, folk musicians would not be sent to concentration camps or labor camps or mental asylums if they sang songs against the government and uh, socialism and communism like it was done in the Soviet Union but he escaped all of that he was a great scientist so let's talk about what he and his um, colleagues discovered in this very mysterious triangle between the Azor and the Canary Islands and Gibraltar Straits so it was in 1984 okay that the sensation made uh, news all over the world and but few people remember it now and Garadnitsky underlined like you know his idea is that as far as the significance of the lost continent's existence is concerned um, 
He said the discovery of Atlantis might change the concept of nature and life development on planet Earth. Gorodnitsky believes that the proved existence of supreme civilizations in the past will make the up-to-date Darwinist society reconsider its views. Alexander Gorodnitsky has been on several expeditions to the places where Atlantis supposedly existed, and he still hopes to organize a targeted mission in order really to study this issue or problem or, you know, what should I say, the existence of Atlantis in detail. I am sure that this issue is completely, is extremely complicated and important, so one has to deal with it seriously on a serious scientific level. That's what uh, he's saying. In 1984, Alexander Gorodnitsky was um, deputy head of the expedition aboard the Vikes scientific research uh, vessel at the mountain Ampere in northern Atlantic. Now it's as 300 miles to the west of Gibraltar and testing the new um, diving equipment at the flat apex of this underwater mountain at the depth of about 100 meters. So another number. The scientists found uh, ruins of an ancient city, mysterious objects that look like antique um, dwellings in the Hersones. Um, th this is an ancient Greek um, city discovered in the former Soviet Union. It, they found stairwells in, uh, in the Empire uh, Mountain, sorry, stairwells and even something that resembled uh, the arcs. Uh, the research showed that the mountain was part of the big system of the underwater uh, horseshoe, which they, 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 they're saying what it means in Russian, and it, um, it extends from the Gibraltar Strait to the Azor Island. So there was a whole country under the water, okay? And here's what the scientist says more, Gorodnitsky. Aboard the underwater apparatus Argus, um, where I myself descended on the apex of the mountain, he says, um, and uh, because we couldn't make quality photographs, listen to this, of the ruins, he and his colleagues made drawings of uh, some fragments of the ruins, and we determined that long ago this was a city. Of course, this could have been done by Mother Nature, but why then are some of the rooms in the ruined buildings uh, have identical size and forms. No, this was an uh, island where, that where people lived. There was an archipelago which was inhabited, where people lived, and for some reasons it went under the water. He says, our expedition could see that this country was at one point on the surface. And it was the chain of the island, the system of the island. And again, looking at the basalt, which we took from the uh, apex of the mountains, we concluded that it solidified in the air. That's why we talked about the hypothesis of Atlantis. So he is saying that really photographs were not made, although the other Soviet scientists said they had 9,000 photographs or so. Interesting. Also, here is what Gorodnitsky says, knowing that during uh, uh, that at one time Atlantis was very much an interest of the Hitlerites or Nazi Germany, because the uh, Nazi Germans considered themselves to be uh, descendants, direct descendants of the ancient Atlanteans, and the chief of Gestapo uh, was himself directly uh, in charge of the search of the continent. So that's what he is asking. How serious was such war, uh, work done in the Soviet Union? Because now we know, which is true, that uh, when it came to many mystical and mythological mysteries, communists went parallel course with fascists or Nazis. And uh, the Soviet scientific research rebel Vitis, um, it was not just out of sheer curiosity that twice in 84 and 86 
it went to the uh, areas of this supposed Atlantis. Every country wants to be the first to get to the treasure of the Atlantis, which still have legends about it. But apparently the Soviet, U Soviet science really never had such uh, aims or missions. That's according to some researchers. Because the Soviet Union never had direct um, way into the Mediterranean and as they say it wasn't their uh, playground and um, all of the efforts of the Soviet secret services were um, sent to find Shambhala on uh, located on Tibet. Th that's according to some scientists and by the way I have videos about it on my YouTube channel I, I, you should look at about such expeditions. So, uh, ac according to some, this uh, scientific vessel uh, Vikas, by ch sheer chance, uh, chanced upon the Atlantis. And uh, the scientists did not have anything in their mind to look for the lost continent. It's just that in 1984, they were doing planned research of the uh, underwater mountains of the uh, northern Atlantic. Since then no expeditions 90, from 1984, that's according to some researchers, no expeditions were undertaken. Actually, um, somewhere in 1990s uh, Moscow was visited by Greek archaeologists who are very much interested in that location by Gibraltar, Gibraltar and plan to send their own scientific expedition there, um, including Russian oceanologists, in particularly Gorodnitsky. But as it seems, that expedition did not take place. So this question about mountain Ampere remains unsolved. There is no international confirmation whether it was Atlantis or whether it was not. So as you can see, there's one question and, uh, and after another. Some people say that uh, Soviets were very much interested and were in the area because they knew something was there and wanted to discover Atlantis. And we know that Aksyonov and others mentioned that the expedition was actually, first expedition was taken place in 1981. So in 1984 what followed was a planned expedition and it was not by chance that they uh, continued to research this area. So were there other expeditions after that? Well, maybe, but they had to be very secret ones and um, just what you can say covered up. And I don't want to go into this BS with conspiracy theories. I just want to find out what happened. Apparently somebody in Greece found out and this may not be uh, the only country that knew. So let's look at what else Gorodnitsky says. He says, so that's, uh, he says, when did, when did you start looking for the Atlantis? He says, in 1984, aboard the um, scientific vessel Vitas, in the area of the underwater uh, mountain uh, chain uh, Horseshoe, we found uh, top of the, um, uh, apex, flat apex of the mountain Ampere uh, ruins or structures which look like the ruins of the city. Um, <clears throat> later, um, uh, years later, he uh, created a model, he says, which cannot be argued with, um, how uh, Atlantis could have um, perished. And that's uh, completely in conjunction with a uh, modern understanding of sciences about the Earth. So where, according to you, Gorodnitsky, is this lost world? He says 300 miles from Gibraltar in the northern Atlantic. In the underwater apparatus, I descended on the mountain Ampere. And here is this rock. This is part of the Atlantis. You can even touch it, you can hold it in your hands. That's what he told to the uh, news uh, uh, people. I don't have it, so don't mistake it. It's Gorodnitsky in St. Petersburg who has it. And they go on. So how are you so sure that this is 
it. Well, I cannot, I cannot push the idea that the mountain is part of the wall that was put together by people, but I have no doubts this is ba this is a basalt um, uh, which um, became solidified or cooled down, uh, not under the water, but in the open air. So, uh, once before this underwater mountain was an island which sank into the ocean uh, there was a big out mountainous country which sank to the ocean and we know that the Plato described Atlantis as a microcontinent or a gigantic or gi very big arch archipelago archipelago and that's why it all comes together so how deep did you dive well this apex um, of the mountain is below the surface of the water 124 to 150 meters and um, then to the uh, to the base of the mountain that's another five kilometers did you find any remnants of the people that people actually live there again as i said we found strange structures which resembled ruins of ancient cities that's it um, in the book that I uh, recently published legends and myths of scientists I published two photographs uh, the one where you can say that the ruins are those of the uh, Atlantis uh, structures and next to it the view from the above to the excavations of the Crimea Hersonis it's practically the same very identical um, I'm gonna tell you more the older I become says Garadnitsky the more I'm open to the idea that we were able to find the um, civilization that sunk to the bottom of the ocean um, not more than once I participated in the scientific conferences about the Atlantis and that's where I proved my point of view from the, posi from the positions of the geological science in, the, in, in, in our history in the period of human existence of human society on, on, on our planet there was an archipelago which uh, catastrophically quickly went under the water why did it happen? because of the cataclysm because of the coming together of the two gigantic plates the african and euro asian uh, but this is a subject of the separate conversation because he says he has details numbers plans and more more than that what else he was also asked the scientists say there are different areas of Atlantis to be uh, uh, located in some say in the Aegean Sea not not in the Atlantis and uh, he says yes true not far from the island of Crete there was some other island in the past Jacques Yves Cousteau uh, discovered there underwater uh, ruins of the um, ancient uh, vessels and uh, quite a large number of um, ancient um, artifacts and the archaeologists and CG, uh, naval geologists uh, consider that this ancient city might have perished as a result of the uh, uh, gigantic volcano explosion about 1500 BC and but the Plato said that Atlantis was located in the Atlantic Ocean he was clear and the, he's being asked what if Plato invented the Atlantis and uh, Gorodnitsky says legends uh, usually are based on real things information which we receive during our expeditions do not contradict uh, the hypothesis of the um, demise of the gigantic chain of islands between the Gibraltar Strait and the Azor Archipelago uh, the first steps uh, into the, going down below uh, or as, um, uh, descending um, down below which were made by our expeditions uh, let us um, discover geological explanation of the um, 
demise of the archipelago right there where Plato placed his Atlantis and actually we know by recent research that the mountains Amper and Josephine were once the islands so we know that they were on the surface at one point and if they, uh, they were on the surface they were islands people could have lived there now here is something interesting he's being asked myth about the Atlantis say that it was a well advanced society or even the other branch of civilization and Garadnitsky says he doesn't believe that the Atlanteans uh, were really more advanced than the uh, societies of the 20th century or that they were uh, aliens or extraterrestrials he doesn't think that they were really that well advanced in technology or art so the last question was then why do we need to find the Atlantis um, and he says well I wanted to find out the reality of the death or demise of Atlantis from the position of contemporary geological science and um, and then he repeats uh, the, the same points uh, that he made before about Plato and the Atlantis so I don't want to go into this again um, he was asked well what about the mystery of Atlantis was it finally solved um, are there any other luminaries in the world science which uh, d share your opinion and what do you hope to prove personally he says there are no scientific luminaries in this area in this subject to be such you need to find 100 um, percent uh, the um, veracity or genuineness of the discoveries that you made and the theories and for that you need a large collection of facts um, I just wanted to prove my hypothesis without proving anything else to anybody else um, and he says if historians and archaeologists do not have an answer about uh, existence of Atlantis geology on the sci and the science of oceans can give such an answer yes he says I uh, state that such an archipelago uh, existed between the Azor Islands and the Gibraltar Strait now we just need to find out uh, was it a big archipelago or a microcontinent and uh, which went down into the ocean that's where the remnants of the Atlantis will be discovered and we need a new expedition um, so I just wanted to, to let you know but and something else about Garadnitsky since 1962 he has participated in Arctic geological expeditions too and he sailed on board of various scientific research vessels I think he stated all that he knows at this point I don't think that other Soviet scientists stated everything they know and there are many questions open about the exact location which in today's world and satellites it's easy to find out but somebody should make an expedition to that island I thank you for your attention if you can support my research please do so through the patreon link in the description and let's keep looking for the Atlantis